Hi guys, welcome to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome to another Premier Division review show. And this week, Ian, it was very exciting, I think. There was a lot of talking points, so I can't wait to get into them. We'll start off with uh, we'll start off in order. So Finn Harps nails in parts like two. Uh, St. Pat's are top of the league at 17 points ahead of Rovers and goal difference. Don't smile. Uh, <laughs> Finn Harps, fourth on 11 points. Still a good start for them. Obviously, their second defeat this season. Um Good win for Pats, I think, overall professional performance. First 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, both teams are a bit, it wasn't great, let's say. But uh, after Billy King scored that goal, which was a cracking goal, I thought Pats were in complete control in this game. Um, actually, Pats changed their formation a little bit, just be- literally before they got the goal. It seemed to me that King was put into a number 10 central role, and Coughlin and Smith were kind of like two up front as such. It was fluid. But um, funnily enough, straight away, Coughlin, nice little flick around the corner. King, great dribbling ability, lovely finish. And as I said, Finn Harps, they fought well in the game, but the top Pats were in control, really, after the goal, pretty much. What did you think? Yeah, look, I'm just delighted to get the win. It doesn't matter how they come. Uh, I really, I'm buzzing after it. I really was. I thought that was our biggest win this season so far. Uh, just really professional and comfortable. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. we, we were so comfortable in the game, man. It, like, you know, the first 20 minutes, everything had to settle down a little bit. You expect that in every game, I think. But I was uh, really impressed. Uh, you know, I thought Coughlin and Smith were up front mainly from the start, really. We kind of yeah. we had a five at the back that moved into a three, you know. And I thought Lee Desmond was excellent down that in the, in the left side of centre half row where he got himself up the pitch. I thought he was excellent and... I really, I was, I was impressed with how Pat's played. I'm just, I'm delighted. I really am, and you can probably say I'm buzzing. But <laughs> you know, I was. Pat's are we good at getting goals in narrow games, and we're good at you know coming out on the right side of the results. Uh, which we've seen there was nothing between ourselves and Bowles. We won a one nil. There was nothing, nothing between Pat's and Dundalk really. And we scored the first goal, you know, and probably could have held on. But, you know, it, ju- it just shows you we're getting goals, we're scored and we're a threat. And I think that's one thing Pat's haven't been for a while. Like, every time we get a corner or something, you feel like something's going to happen. And uh, it's it's really impressive. And look, I, I said it from the start. And I, if anybody goes back and listens every week, I'm commending Stephen O'Donnell. And I'm saying, look, it's a work in progress. You can see what he's trying to do. And, you know, it's it's slowly but surely getting there where we still have a long, long way to go. Uh, we're not going to be forced. I think everybody in the league is playing a second. But, you know, the highest you can finish would be great. And we'll be looking for a European trip next year with a bit of luck. But, you know, you're looking at Finn Harps. They'd be a little bit disappointed they didn't give more of a game to Pats. You know, they didn't really, like... I don't know how many long throws they had into the box, but you know there was no, not one made a difference. Uh, made a not, point that that seemed to be their biggest threat on the night was long throws, and even at that pass dealt with them quite comfortably. To be fair, yeah, like Lee isn't the tallest of centre half. He can leap. Uh, you know, you obviously have Paddy Barra, who you know you're not beating him in a header, and uh, Sam Bowen is fairly tall as well, and he can move. Wrong. So you know, I think Pats are Pats are good. Do you just need to keep that? Keep the players fit. That's the most important thing. Like we've seen how good Billy King is for us. He's brilliant. He can pick up any play along the front three or in the number 10, whatever. He'll do a job. Like he's been excellent. I prefer a good Billy King for 30 minutes off the bench mm. than a half decent one for 60 minutes of the game. You know, I like bringing him off the bench. Uh, I will, I think uh, if, he's, if he's fish enough, though, he starts in that team. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? Because the yeah, quality he brings. Would. I would have uh, I would have took seven points out of the next out of the next nine like last week and considering we beat uh, Waterford, we beat you know, we beat Finn Harps and we've Longford next week, you know. If we can get mm-hmm. nine if we can get nine, great, but seven was a target, I think, and you know, you're happy with seven. <laughs> but you know, you, you have to say that the way Pats have started has just been excellent. They've been a breath of fresh air to the league in terms of how they're playing and mm. 
not one person was talking about Pats, you know. And uh, funnily enough, Keane, I still think there's. Uh, we'll get on to another team later on. You'll know what I mean when I mention it. But uh, I still think there's an element of under the radar for Pats, and that's what you want. You yeah. don't want people saying you're going to challenge for the d- league or you're going to win the league and things like that. You know what I mean? No, um, looking at everything's we're calm. Going we're not going to win the league at all. Yeah, uh, exactly. For, in order for Pats to win the league, you know, uh, in order for Pats to win the league, other teams need to fall. And yes. you know, in 2013, like Rovers and Sligo were the teams to be, mm. and both of them fell, and then Pats just came in and won it. I don't think it's a case of Pats being great, I think other teams need to fall in order for Pats to win the leagues, yeah, and win yeah. cups. So, you know, we're always going to be playing second or third fiddle in the league, but you know, we. Yeah, I'll just give you a separate chance. And look, I'm happy with Europe if we can get it. I'll put your hand off for it. You know, we haven't been in Europe consistently at all. So, exactly. you know, we'll, we'll definitely take it. But Finn Hart will be disappointed. Uh, they have a big couple of weeks left now. You know, they got themselves a great starting point in the league. And I think they probably would have bit your hand off for the points they have now. Absolutely. 11 points so, after seven matches. Yeah, like, you know, really good. But, you know, I think after the start they had, They'd be a little bit disappointed, you know, because mm. they would have thought, you know, we can basically get ourselves safe mm. after 10, 11, after 10 to 15 games. Let's get yourself safe and then see where it takes you. But, you know, I have to say, it just shows you it's very competitive. Like every game is just so competitive. And that's what we love about the league. Absolutely. Speaking about competitive, and uh, this, I thought it was a good game. Shamrock Rovers 2, Bohemians 1 at Tallow Stadium. And I'm smiling because, uh, I remember saying before the game that this is never a good game, very rarely, and the fans make it. But in fairness to both teams, this was actually a really good game, wasn't it? Shamrock Rovers came out of the blocks flying. Um, attack balls in that right-hand side. I don't know how many times the scored from that as such, through Dylan Watts. Um, are you with me? You there, yeah? Yeah, I'm still there. He froze a little bit on me there, yeah. But I'll just continue <laughs> with that, all right? Um, yeah. yeah, anyway, yeah, with Dylan Watts. like So... You know, Bowles came back into the game, played some lovely stuff. That move for Tierney's goal, what a move that was. Actually, I'll let you talk about that. That was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, look, Bowles would be disappointed that they didn't keep the door shut early early in the game. You know, to go 1-0 down to Rovers so early. But it wasn't even that. They were getting battered in the first five minutes. Rovers had a great chance before that as well. And, Work, you know, yeah. you, you, you come to tally, you can't be, you can't be open like that. Uh, I really thought it was going to be a case of how many... Uh, when Rob was got the force on, I was kind of a little bit worried. Yeah. Uh, looking at the way get the game went, Bowles' reaction was excellent. Absolutely superb. And look, Liam Bort missed an absolute <laughs> set. And look, oh my God. Look, now, Arden Graham was the same now. I'm going to go on to that in a minute. But look, you know, they, these are players you put your life on, probably scored. But look, I, we haven't seen enough about Liam Bort, but look, from that angle and from where he was, you have to finish that. You have to wrap that foot around. Could have it. even taken another touch. You had the time and space yeah, if you wanted to. Look, it wasn't to be, but Bowles was excellent. Tierney, what a player he's going to be. Uh, you know, and it just shows you. Look, if Tierney, for example, if Tierney went off somewhere else, if Dawson the boy is just going to come straight in, and I know there was someone else from the underage is going to move up once one player leaves. So it just, it's, the pedigree the house have and this, the young talent that, that they have is exceptional. Mm. So, look, um, I've seen Tierney play now a number of times, especially in the 19s, the underage of Bowles. So he's absolutely excellent. Both. Big, strong lad as well, isn't he? See him, see him glowing at that team. It, it means a lot for myself as a League of Ireland fan. You know, we love seeing mm. these young players make We love seeing them play. You know, Andy Lyons, who's people forget how young he is. He's only like he's not he's not even twenty yet, you know, mm. this fella this fella's playing right back for the last number of years for bowls. You know, and it just I, I love it. I love everything about the league like that. I love mm. these young players making it through. Uh what a game though. Like it really was. It was end to end. It was just you know, it was just attack and attack. There was no defending. There was I I have to say for the first half I was saying this can't continue like this. It really can't. And I don't know how it was only one all at halftime, by the way. As you said, yeah. Aaron Green missed a 
like that's probably his weakness a little bit. We know what he offers Rovers and all, but when he gets into situations like that, he probably isn't quite that striker. You know what I mean? But uh, he should be talking that away anyway. Let's be honest about yeah. it. Well, no, not even like I was just I was saying to myself, we can't continue. You know, <laughs> it's just someone is going to have to shut up the shop, Luke. You know, because uh, uh, they didn't even in the second half. Like Bowers took the game for Rovers. Mm. If anyone was going to win it, for me it was Bowers. Uh, I just fancied Bowers to nick it. Because they were the they were the better side in the game. Mm. Uh, they now there wasn't a lot between both sides, but mm. I thought Bowles just edged it for me. Yeah, second uh, half I thought Bowles were the better side, and uh, like we'll get onto the penalty, and there's a lot of controversy about this. I've watched the back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not going to ma- mention them, but I have actually talked to uh, a League of Ireland referee about this as well. I won't mention his name, but. Um, Apparently, it's a penalty in the rule book, Ian. Uh, a lot of people mightn't be pleased with that. A lot of Bowles fans mightn't be pleased with that. Um, I think Finnerty was clumsy, in my opinion. Yes, Mandrew goes down very easily. We all know that. Players are going to go down in the box, aren't they, very easily. But he gets on the wrong side. He tugs him back. And there's the other argument that happened in the outside of the box. But if you're fell on the outside of the box and it continues inside the box penalty can actually be given so I'm just going by the letter of the law the red card might be a different thing but how did you see it anyway yourself personally yeah look it was soft there's no question there. I think anyone would say it was soft uh, you have seen them given before this isn't the first time a penalty it's not the worst been. decision I've ever seen in the world either if you get me no but you know it's soft now I, I, I genuinely thought he wasn't going to give it I really didn't when I seen him going down live I, I was laughing because I was like why would you go down there because uh, I, I didn't see too much into it. It's when you slow it down and, and look, look back, back earlier. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, the game is played in real life. Mm. Okay, you see, you've seen it now when they slow teams down in England, they're looking at the results and, you know, they're slowing the tackle. Down far and that, yeah. It looks an awful lot worse. Mm. So that's the only thing. It probably looks worse in slow motion. Mm. Considering like, that happened in a split second, you know, it's. If I started outside the box for me, it's mm. a free kick. That, that's just me. I would have always, that's what I thought. Mm. I know it can in the real book and stuff mm. like that could be into a penalty. I think but that's what's me, happening, Keen. You're right, though. I think that's what's happening. People are kind of giving their opinion on whether, say, things should be fouls as opposed to what's in the rule book, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. If you're asking me what my opinion is, actual opinion, I think probably you're giving a free outside the box there. But yeah. if that's the rule, what can the referee do? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I think a lot of people are a little yeah. bit confused by that part of it. Yeah, you can understand that. And look, I'd be I'd be fuming if that was given again. You know, and I think any team wouldn't like it to be given. But I think it's you know, all this evens out over the course of a season, and you know, it's it's just disappointing considering the performance. The red card, you know, and that that kills it for me, you know. That was never a red card. I just thought yeah. Keane, he was he was very quick though to give the red card. It was just like straight away. There was no thinking time even. And then um, no. my 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 problem there is like again the rule maybe, but my problem there is that is Mandrew definitely getting to that ball? That's the question. I'm yeah, not well, so I, sure. I don't it's know. not a clear I'm goal not... scoring opportunity. Do you understand look, what I mean? Look, I'm not bothered about him giving it a penalty and stuff like that. Look, I says I'd be disappointed if it came against me, but the red card is a bit too far. Uh, don't think it was a red card at all. And in fairness, I thought he actually had a great game as a referee. I thought uh, he, he actually managed it really well. And look, I, I know a lot of the refs, personally. I have a good bit of crack and a good bit of stick with them. You know, that's what it's all about, in my opinion. I love it. I love that sort of event, you know, having the laugh and joke. And, you know, I told you the story before about Neil Doyle and stuff, you know. <laughs> You have you have a, you have great laughs with them. Uh, I've, I get on really well with them. With super superb relationships with a lot of people mm. in the league. That I'm very proud of. But, you know, I, I just I didn't agree with that. I really didn't. I didn't agree with the red card. Uh, mm. It didn't kill the game, and I really didn't. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't think Bowles can actually say that the red card had a big burden on it because I thought Bowles were excellent. You know, they were still pressing, they were still pushing. It's I just- think Kane really, ultimately, a lot of his frustration as well, ultimately, Bohemians will be disappointed they didn't grab a second, let's say, before that point, because you say they were pushing. Again, though, from Shamrock Rovers quickly, from their point of view, it's another win where they just grind it out, you feel. I know they played well in patches as well, but they did grind out this win ultimately again. And this is why, in my opinion, it's hard to go against them at this minute in time because eventually they're going to hit some form and, um, you know, the players coming off the bench, etc., etc. Um, they'll be delighted with the win, really. 
Yeah, at least. With the win, uh, Rob was our excellent, you know what they do, and I thought Mandrew was superb. He was kicked up and down that pitch the other day, and he was excellent. Like, he really was. No surprise uh, there. <laughs> you know, he, he really was excellent though, in the game. I thought Graham Bulk was even good. You know, Graham is superb quality. That you know, we kind of goes under the radar in every game. You know, like, that's you know, because a lot of people judge people how they do on the ball, but look what he yeah. does off the ball. The pockets he picks up, the space he makes. The, yeah. he's just such an intelligent footballer. Yeah, no, I, I have to say, I think Rob was now Rob was a clear favourite for this league, and I think it'd be the biggest shock probably in a long, long time if they don't win the league this year. I think so. Yeah, good win for Rovers. Obviously level with Pats and 17 points. Ed was another big derby over the weekend and the Dock found some form here. They beat Drott of the United by two goals to one. I watched this one at that at the time at six o'clock itself yeah. and uh, I thought Keane, to be honest, in the first half, I thought the Dock were very good. I thought it was their best performance of the season. I felt Drott were chasing shadows of a man switch in that first half and yeah. went one in one nil down but we're very fortunate to go in one nil down. Uh, second half, I think a little bit of doubt might have come into Dundalk because they hadn't won yet. And Drotter did take the game to them, but Han's goal, which is probably against the run of play at that point, kind of sealed the win before Chris Lyons getting the late goal. But, uh, you know, Dundalk, I thought I taught the new guy, Zahabo is his name in the middle park. I thought he looked, he looks a player. I know he ran out of steam, but I thought he looked a player. Um, nice kind of rangy kind of, a, you know, cigar in your mouth type of player. Like, I like the look of him. Yeah, he's a, he's a good look about him. He, he can play, there's no question. He has a, he has a bit about him. But, you know, I thought uh, Drott would have to be disappointed. I really think that uh, Dundalk weren't great. I wasn't pretty at times. Like, I really wasn't. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be fuming if I was Drott a fan because, you know, that was the best chance to beat Dundalk. You think a little bit now. I obviously watched Drott to play Shamrock Rovers like, live. I was there at the game and the effort they put into that game. And I just wonder if that came a little bit into this game. You know what I mean? Yeah, You're talking it's, about... It's hard. You're playing three games in a week. It's, yeah. It's as hard as it gets. This is your third game, you know, uh, of, the, of, of the week. And it's like even to play one game a week is tough on the body. You know, you're playing three. You're training. Three of the players are walking. Some of them you know? are, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit mad. And... Considering the performance they put in, they should be very proud of themselves. They will be disappointed they didn't pick up at least a point. I don't think the dog were great. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I don't think they were fabulous, but um, they've been that bad this season. I thought the first half performance was probably their best yeah, <laughs> so far. Uh, do you see what I mean? Yeah, it looked like Millen was lively and yeah. he got he got himself a nice goal. Yeah. And look, this, this I I really rate him. I really rate Mac Millen. I always did, I always said it to you, and I just thought, you know, this fella given the chance to score and you know he's getting half chances that was only a half chance he really scored you know lovely header and, wasn't it yeah lovely header but it's only a half chance it's not you know at the end like if he misses that one I'm saying jeez that was a great chance he just, he just makes yeah. it look easy to be honest with yeah. you that's he was really good and you know he I have to say Dundalk can be delighted to get that win I think it's important and the fact that it was against Schrott that makes it a little bit better for them but Schrott like I said they'd be disappointed and you know, Tim would expect more, mm. and I, I really believe that. Like, you know, this Drada isn't here to make up the numbers, Drada are here now to perform in this league, and they've been exceptional, they've been a great addition to the league. You know, uh, I'd be just I'd be gutted if I was dropping because you know, Dundalk are there for the take, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, they turned around twice and scored, that's about it, really. In the game, they, they didn't do much, they didn't cause Drada many problems. So they scored very late. They scored five minutes with five minutes to go. Maybe mm. that was a bit of a maybe that was a bit of a chance of getting a draw out of it, but mm. they scored a bit too late, you know. They I think they up. needed to score when they were on top and they were one down when the dock got that second goal in the break. You felt like Drotter they were pushing for an equalizer. They might have scored in the next five, ten minutes, but uh, that second goal was crucial for Dundalk because it just gave them that confidence because their confidence yeah. are gonna be fragile at the moment as well. But interestingly for Dundalk, their next two games against Waterford and Longford. They gotta fancy their chances if they want to get back into that at least the European race anyway to get six points in those games. Like, yeah, no question about it. You know, they'd be they'd be looking to win them. They'd be looking to beat the two teams. Mm-hmm. You know, Waterford had a great win, which we'll speak about. But yeah, well, they'll they'll be looking now to really push on from that 
and this is a chance to really push themselves up the table. Mm. Uh, I just think they need to get this situation sorted. Uh, they need to get a manager in, and whether it's going to be a manager and under the under under the old rules, basically, it doesn't matter. Yeah, at this stage, yeah. And you need to get someone in, you need to get the right person in. And if the look, if they're the owners of the club, they can do what they want. Let's be honest. You know, they can, they can do what they want, they can pick the team, they can but they just need to have this manager in place. And whether it's under his rule and who's picking the team or whatever's going on, I just think it needs to be clear and precise to the manager, which I think it will be. Uh, you know, I'm looking at Jerry Little, I'm saying, yeah, you could, you could, you know, but at the same time... David Healy, another one thrown around there? Yeah. To make it no, up? No, we can't see too much on that now. But I'll I'd be, I'd be, I'd be surprised if he goes, if he does go with uh, a League of Ireland manager now. I'd say yeah. it will be somewhere else. Uh, or Jerry Little, who was only... I wouldn't be yeah. shocking if it was out of the blue type thing. Someone no one has mentioned and suddenly... Yeah, look, it's uh, it's something that needs to be sorted. But look, what a great win for them. Yeah, no, they need the three points there. Now, Saga Rovers are beaten 1 0 by Derry City. I watched that back actually earlier on today. And uh, before we get into it, I was messaging you. I have to say, Joseph Nadeau, I mean, take a bow. What a commentator. Like, I mean, sort that out, lads. We need to get him on every single match. Like, he was a, like, I mean, you know, he seduced me as a player, but he's after doing it as a commentator as well. What a performance by Joseph Nadeau. Probably the best performance on the day, but there you see, he'll still be delighted with the three points. I'll tell you one thing about Sligo, though. It's funny we mentioned about rotation. Sligo haven't really rotated in the last few weeks. I just wonder if that came back to haunt them a little bit in this game, because it seemed a bit sluggish, didn't they, Keen? Uh, it was... It's very hard, you know. Um, look, if I had known the point of being, had would have been sacked, I probably would have pinched in Derry to have a draw. You know what? It, it, it's really hard. Look, I think uh, it's the toughest time to play a team in the, t- in the new man just game. Like, we've seen it over the years. We've seen it. Yeah, always. Like, I remember Bray were bottom of the league with no points. And all of a sudden, Trevor Crowley comes in. And uh, be, they beat Pat 1-0. Even, you know, even um, uh, John Caulfield last year, like, is a great recent example. Just all of a sudden, it's really, it's really hard to mm. it's really hard to play a team with a new manager. Uh, I don't know why. I just I just find it so tough, and it's very it's mentally draining another team that uh, you're actually playing against because you're looking and the, these are just kicking into gear now. These are mm. the a new manager. It's a fresh start. Everyone's up for it, but you know you still have to go and perform, and there he did. Uh, Derry were comfortable they but were, their midfield actually have Sean Sligo's midfield not yeah. many have done that this year they were really comfortable in the game we mean extremely mm. comfortable I thought uh, when they went one nil up I think that was, well we knew the scores but no issue with looked, the penalty by the way just to throw it out there no, no. no. I mean he just um, cleans him out of it doesn't he yeah. <laughs> I have to say now when they went one nil up they were comfortable and you know they even toned it down a notch or two when they were still comfortable, you know. They weren't, it wasn't going hard, it wasn't anything like it. It was very patient, it was very controlled. And I think, you know, what a perfect start for uh, Rory. You know, if if he lost this game, I don't think anyone would have been batting eyelids, you know. But considering he won the game, he got the three points. Now it's time now to kick on and get Dirty back up that, that table. That's what he'd be thinking. Yeah, they're actually but, still bottom keen, but of course it's very yeah. tight now. It's after tightening up big time there. Yeah. It's uh, it's gonna be like that all the way from now to the end of the year. I'll, I'm just I'm delighted for Rory. I think he's excellent. He's one of the most underrated people in Ireland. Like that role he had at Dundalk, they yeah. really badly missed him. You know, and you know Stephen O'Donnell was Stephen O'Donnell took over his job mm. at Dundalk, and then Dundalk Dundalk let Pat speak to Stevie. And come and come and be the manager. So it's a uh, it's a big job that Dundalk still haven't got Rui mm. since he left. You know, and look, you see him with the Irish squad. He's gone places as, as a coach. So I think he's an exciting appointment, similar to Stephen O'Donnell. Uh, fresh in, new ideas, new way of playing. Uh, yeah, Derry City are on the up for me, and look, I'm delighted. I really am. I, I love seeing new bodies in the league. Mm. Like Rory has been around I don't know how many years now 
but I've seen him play as a player for yes. Derry and Cork and stuff like that. But to see him coming in as a manager, it's like get Stevie, like I said, coming in a patch. Yeah. And Raff just, with him as well. It's just a little bit of bread of fresh air there, isn't yeah, it? It's just a new it's a new lease of life, I think, for the league. To see these new people. You see the same change around the managers, you see it all the time. So to just you know, to have to have Rory there, he's only young. I I, I really am expecting big things from Derry now. Uh just I, I just I'm really delighted and I hope he does really well. Yeah, absolutely. As for Sligo as well, and I was going to mention about Pats earlier on, they were going under the radar a little bit. I felt Sligo were the opposite, Keen. I thought they were toe-to-toe with Pats, but I thought too many people were talking about title charges and winning titles and things like that. Honestly, I felt it, especially during the week, and I started to think, you know, Derry could get something here. It kind of panned out that way, but it just kind of, it's a little reality check as well for Sligo. I think Pats might get that at one point as well, but it is a little bit of a reality check, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Sligo will got it this week Pats might get it next week the week out. Pats will get it it's only a matter of time before you get it uh, someone's going gonna to beat you this year and it has to come Sligo be I prefer to be beaten away from home it's all about reaction as well once you're beaten as well isn't it yeah. I, I prefer to be beaten away from home yeah. I, don't know, it's just, I just love the thoughts of being at home next week and getting put in the right uh, but you know we're just Sligo Sligo will still be up there no question about it uh, you're going to lose games on the bounce this year. Look, like I said it's the toughest time to play a man, play a team when a new manager comes in. Uh, I think, you know, a lot, a lot of like you, you see it everywhere. You see it in any league in the world, like you know, a new manager comes in, you need to put your head on them winning, and that's just the way it is. And I'm, I'm impressed. I'm still impressed with Sligo. Uh, I still think they'll be they'll be right up there towards the end. Uh, whether they fall off a little bit, same as Pats, I think they're going to fall off. I don't think, I don't think, let's say, they're going to have a chance of winning that or anything like it before you six, seven games to go. I think, uh, I think Pats and Sligo are just going to drop off that little bit. Yeah, ultimately, uh, I think, I honestly think if they finish both in the European places, they'd be absolutely delighted with that. Like, yeah, really, I like, think, and there's a possibility you cup there Dundalk, too. Dundalk will be up in that pill with Pats and Sligo. I think yeah. Tows will be in that pill with Pats and Sligo. I think it's the best of the rest. Uh, we're all fighting for second. Second is like second for that little pool of teams is probably that's as good as it's going to get, you know. And if you finish second in this league, you're doing really well. You're hoping you get a couple of players in, you're getting a couple of bodies in, and you can just close that gap that little bit more. But that's you know that's that's the aim. But I'm really I have to say I'm really impressed with Derry, and you know I just I really hope that he does well because he's a great league of all man. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Waterford FC won Longford Town nil, and um, look, it was a difficult match overall to watch. But look, Waterford be delighted with this because uh, Prince took his goal well. I have to say, it was a mistake by I think it might be Joe Gorman at the back for Longford, but he took his goal brilliantly. Uh, Kyle Ferguson sent off then uh, about sixty minutes, I think it was maybe seventy minutes. I can't remember, but uh, no issue with it either. Uh, it was a bit of an elbow. I don't know what he was doing to go and switch it. But they dug deep Waterford, and they'd be absolutely delighted that they dug deep to get a win. Uh, Martin made one great save actually in the first half. I felt with Manley coming in, he really narrowed the angle. He's been okay for them, I have to say, in goal. But um, I think this is a big win for Waterford. They just needed a win and they, they got it. And they're obviously up to eight now. They're above Longford. Bit of a mad week for Waterford. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Say it every week, Ian. <laughs> it's an episode of Blade and Coronation Street every week. But, Not that know, good. I was, I was impressed. I was really impressed with him. They really kicked on, you know. It's like, uh, you know, Kevin is a passionate man. Mike is a passionate man, you know. The two of them are <laughs> in the club, and you know, the hearts are in the right places. And you know, we it, we can't put any fault to what's going on with the club with these two. Uh, considering, you know, you're looking at all this happened a couple of years ago. This is, you know, all this happened a couple of years ago. This isn't only new to Waterford. Yeah, I think what they're kind of used to it now at this stage. But the way they came out and he was resigned, and then he wasn't, and then he, he announced that he wasn't resigned when he said goodbye to the players. And I don't know, I don't you just, couldn't keep up, like, could you? No, I was just talking. I couldn't believe. It. But you know, we they they put it all behind them. They went out and got a fantastic result and won the game, which was excellent. I was really impressed with how they held on and. You know, they won their battles, like key battles. 
they got gifted one chance. Look, he was only shot of putting the net for. He got gifted one shot uh, and they scored. That's all they needed. Uh, they didn't do anything after that, I really don't think. They didn't do anything before that. Yeah, it was lack of quality overall. It was a battling performance, I suppose, but lack of quality, yeah. yeah. yeah they need more, though. They need yeah. more. Uh, yeah. they're not so will Longford, actually, as well, in fairness, won't they? Yeah, Longford they need more now. Longford are coming to Pats next week. And look, we've seen when they came to Rovers, we've seen what they were like. Uh, they were they got ahead and they were very, very hard yeah, to break. You just don't so, know, do you? So, you know, these people, Longford, there's no pressure on Longford. You know, mm. Longford, at the start of the season, Longford weren't expected to beat Waterford either. Mm. So you know, I, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be too down about Longford. They gifted them a chance, mm. and they scored. That's it. That's all Longford done. Longford Here's an interesting one, Keane. I'll throw at you. Do, do you remember they lost four 0 to Drogheda, and um, yeah. they've, they haven't played Lee Stacey since. They played Michael Kelly. Um, I don't know. It seems a little bit harsh. I don't know what's going on at training, but just from the outside looking in, interesting one that though, isn't it? To change your keeper there last couple of games. Yeah, look, I think the boat lads are top keepers. Yeah, I like think, Kelly uh, is good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, as well. Well, boat keepers are tops. Uh, we don't know what's going on. Mm. Lee is Lee is an exceptional goalkeeper. Uh, I really seen Lee strive. Like I, I, I didn't really rate Lee as such because I'd never really seen him. Mm. And it was the Leicester Senior Cup game that Shells played Pat in a couple of years ago, and he had the game of his life. Now, I mean, he had the game of all his life. He was excellent. He was everywhere. The saves he was pulling off. And then I kept a close eye on him. He's a top, top lad as well. Uh, he'll get himself back into that side. No doubt. Uh, look, we don't know. Maybe Gerard Finn is trying better than I'm a trend. Who knows? You know, it's it's all about decisions. It's full margins. And look, you look at Waterford. Brian Moby was he put something on what on seeing well, that cousin or something is on the bench, was it? Is that right? Cousin was on the bench. Yeah. I don't, look, I don't know what's going on there. Mm. I just oh. clearly a rift between him and Mike Newell, to be honest, but you know. Yeah, look, I think uh I like to see that though. I don't like to see them fall now, but I like to see a bit of a bit of aggression. It shows that a lot of them are a lot of them curry, you know. Mm. So I think Waterford are a bit nice. So I, I like to see mm. that. I like to see that bit of passion and I like to see that about your club but I don't want to see arguing and stuff like that. And or even like managers that. And, and assistants walking off the training pitch and training. That's, yeah. I think that's going a little too far in my opinion though. You know? Yeah, look, I think they're going to get it sorted. They're going to be right. Uh, it's going, they're going to need a lot more quality though. Mm, definitely. Look guys, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. Thanks again, Keen. Good stuff. Oh,